a mix of too ridiculous to be true and so cruel that you really wish it wasn't true. Today's list will feature all this and more. Welcome back, most amazing top 10 fam. I'm your host. Rachel Fisher. Hey, how you doing? And today we are counting down our list of top 10 mysterious abandoned projects you're not supposed to know about. Beware, this list starts out light and funny, but it gets really dark really fast, so let's go. Number 10, Wilhelm Reich's Cloud Busters. I don't even, I don't even know how to begin this one. The experiments of Wilhelm Reich believed to have the answer as to why the sky was blue. His reason? Because it was so damn sexy. Reich was heavily influenced by Freud's work on the human libido and believed that he could relate human orgasms to the weather. He proposed a widespread kind of energy called orgon. You might have heard of organite. Orgon was everywhere in Reich said he could measure this energy in motion across the earth. His description literally sounds like the force from Star Wars, but like sexy. He believed that when people had orgasms, they discharged their energy, which if harnessed, could be used to treat diseases like cancer. Ridiculous. In the 1950s, he went so far as to involve aliens as he believed they were spraying the earth with some kind of radiation that inhibited the orgasm energy. So he made the cloud buster with his son, which essentially was a row of tubes attached to hoses immersed in water aimed at the sky. It was supposed to absorb the radiation and make it rain, which happened once. Many believe it was just a coincidence. Did it work? We may never know. Right or wrong, we will never know. They ordered Reich's various machines and apparatuses to be destroyed and had him jailed for trying to smuggle them out of state. Number nine, 10 cent beer night. In Ontario, Canada, we are all too familiar with people making stupid decisions for a buck of beer. If you're curious to search on Google a uh, buck of beer, you'll know. I'll admit this one isn't all mysterious, but it was too funny not to include. The 10 cent beer night was an experiment that took place in 1974, orchestrated by the Cleveland Indians. They wanted to increase game attendance, so they introduced a 10 cent beer promotion. You could have as much beer for as only 10 cents a glass. As you can guess, the worst idea ever. Needless to say, the stadium was packed with those enticed by the promotion. Their game against the Texas Rangers included a whole lot of nudity and debauchery. The game included at one point a woman running into the Indians on deck circle and flashing the umpire. Then there was a naked fan running onto the field sliding into second base. And a father and son duo who ran onto the outfield and mooned the bleacher section. Yeah. Fans started launching fireworks into the Rangers dugout resulting in an all out riot. They ended up abandoning the promotion only to bring it back later with a limit of two per person. I mean, I guess it worked. It's not mysterious, but it was funny. So I hope you laughed. Number eight, Henry A. Murray. This is sadly the real life version of Clockwork Orange, if you've ever seen that movie. <sighs> Henry A. Murray was a psychologist who may have been responsible, part, for Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. Ted was an undergrad at Harvard in the 1950s and 60s and participated in a three year study with Murray. Murray was trying to explore the effects of stress on the human psyche. Ted, along with 21 other students, were asked to write an essay about their worldview and their personal philosophies. After which, they were interrogated under bright lights, wired to electrodes, and completely torn down. Like they were torn to shreds. These were the kind of techniques they were planning to use on the enemies during the Cold War. So, in other words, he was psychologically tormented. Ted even said it was the worst experience of his life. Apparently Ted was already quite an emotional mess before this all started, so it's pretty certain that he had already had a good foundation for what he would do later. However, today this study is considered highly unethical and would never be done again. Or so we think. Number seven, the Stanford prison experiment and how it started funny and now it's going ooh, down really dark, no light here. I don't know who thought this would be a good idea or even containable, but hey, it happened. The Stanford prison experiment was a social psychology study that went totally off the wall in 1971. The US Naval Research Office wanted to explore the effect of role playing and social expectations. The argument was that situations and circumstances affect how people act, not the people themselves. 24 men were assigned either the role of prison guard or inmate, a kind of grown up cops and robbers game. They were paid $15 an hour, now Ontario's minimum wage, to participate in the study. They committed so hard that by only the second day, the prisoners revolted 
Some were even pulled out entirely because it was too much. It all got so bad that it was finally abandoned after six days when an outside observer was like, dude, the no. This is not okay. This is not okay. Can we end this? Makes one certainly guess all those advertisements saying get money to be a subject for this new scientific study. <laughs> Ugh, what is it gonna be? Number six, red Frankenstein. We know humans and chimps are pretty close relatives, but we are still wholly different beings. But to Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, didn't seem to think so, and in fact wanted to bring us that much closer together. Mostly known for his contribution to artificial insemination, which is a very good thing, it's a good thing, Ivanov also had other plans. By the scientific community, he was known as Red Frankenstein due to his desire to fuse humans with an ape. Despite controversy in the scientific community, Ivanov got the all clear to head to Africa to collect specimens. At first, he artificially inseminated female chimps with human sperm, and then later, the other way around. Obviously, he never succeeded because it was like, guys, this isn't a good idea. But imagine if he had? Terrifying. Thankfully, the project was abandoned, but can you believe that the same guy who revolutionized insemination tried to do this? Actually, kind of, yes, I can. Number five, Cola Super Deep Hole. Human beings certainly love exploring the stars and the ocean below us, but curiosity still remains for what's beneath our feet. A few countries have attempted to get to the center of the Earth, but the Soviets actually managed to get the furthest. From 1970 to 1994, they drilled on the Kola Peninsula and created the deepest hole in the world, extending 7.5 miles into the Earth. However, the project was forced to stop in the early 1990s when they encountered unexpectedly high temperatures. At the bottom hole, they reached temperatures of 180 degrees Celsius, which is 356 degrees Fahrenheit. A drastic difference than anyone expected. The rock was more like melted plastic than rock and impossible to cut through. But other worries about causing earthquakes or even splitting the earth are rumored to be another reason for why the mission was completely stopped. Number four, Midnight Climax. Operation Midnight Climax would not be considered at all ethical by any standards of today. God, I hope so. But it does make you wonder how much is happening behind closed doors. Midnight Climax was one of the CIA's, oh, the CIA, most controversial abandoned projects of the past. Tensions were high during the Cold War, and the idea of mind control was too good a tactic not to try and develop. So in the 1950s, the CIA started Operation Midnight Climax. The aim was to research the effects of psychedelics like LSD to see if they could use that to somehow form an extra kind of persuasion. Their unconsenting subjects followed women of the night under their payroll who dosed them with LSD unknowingly. They set up warehouses in San Francisco and NYC to monitor the cases through one-way glass. So essentially like the red light district in Amsterdam, but with CIA funding. With the project being a weird observance of people doing the nasty, the warehouses were shut down in 1965 after the project was discovered. Number three, unit 731. So here we go, we're in the top three. It gets really dark from here on in. Just a fair warning to all of you. If you thought the experiments in the Holocaust were bad, you're right. They were awful, no exceptions there. But did you know that over in Japan, they were doing some evil experiments of their own and of the same caliber in unit 731. The unit was run by Shiro Ishii, an evil genius driven to perform the worst of humanity. Ishii, along with everyone working at unit 731, performed horrifying, horrifying experiments to test out disease and biological warfare. The cruel experiments on prisoners of war and Chinese civilians in their encampments would make your stomach churn. They performed live vivisections and infected them with a variety of diseases on top of making them go through hypothermia, frostbite, induced strokes and heart attacks. But this is where things get extra seedy and is probably something the US doesn't like talking about. After the war, Ishii was never punished. He was never persecuted. Instead, the US traded his freedom for all of the information he gathered from his experiments. So on one hand, that makes me sick. And on the other, I am hopeful that the information is being used for good and the dead didn't die in vain. Number two, the two-headed dog experiment. This sounds as bad as it is. If you love doggos as much as I do, you may want to look away. 
Fortunately, I have to stay here and tell you about this because it's my job. There have been some fantastic advancements in the field of science which has allowed things like organ transplants to be possible. Many, many lives have been saved. Vladimir Demikov was the first person to perform a successful coronary artery bypass operation on a warm-blooded creature, but his studies in order to get there were nothing short of horrifying as you can guess by the title. He stitched the head and front legs of a puppy onto the neck of a German Shepherd and he did this multiple times, and it was a success each and every time. Both dogs could move independently and functioned quite well. However, the tissue was rejected, and out of his 20 subjects, only one survived a full month. Even though this is one of the cruelest things I've ever seen in my life, this is the painful backstory behind how we as humans are able to have organ transplants and it's it's kind of insane and I don't know how I feel. Number one, the Tuskegee Syphilis Project. Syphilis for centuries was probably one of, if not the most feared STD in the world up until the 1980s when the AIDS epidemic happened. It is truly a horrible disease, but with the development of penicillin, it was suddenly treatable, unless you were a part of this study. Between 1932 all the way up to the 1970s, to the 1970s, uh, the US Public Health Service launched a study asking the question as to what happens if syphilis goes untreated. Like we didn't have centuries of evidence at that point, but anyways, this you can tell this gets me angry. The study included tracking the progress of syphilis in over 600 African American men in Mancoon County, Alabama. As you can guess, it was one of the most inhumane, racist, and unethical studies of all time. The men who enrolled were promised to be given free medical care, but they lied to them saying they were treating them for bad blood, which was completely made up. 399 men had latent syphilis, while 201 of them were in a control group. Rather than treating them with penicillin, they were given placebos, aspirin, and mineral substances. Because of their abhorrent behavior, 28 died of syphilis, 100 died of complications relating to the disease, and 40 spouses were undiagnosed, which passed the disease to 19 children. And that is how we end the list with one of the worst things in history. That was our top 10 mysterious abandoned projects you're not supposed to know about, but now you do. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this video, and if you want to check out more, let us know. Tell us in the comments, and remember to subscribe if you want to see more of me and the rest of the hosts. It's a good time. It's a good time over here. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. Thanks for stopping by, and as always, take care. Mm -hmm.